everybody. Welcome to another episode of How to Pass the Math FSA. This is the fifth grade edition, so if you are a fifth grader, a fifth grade teacher, parent of a fifth grader, fifth grade tutor, you are in the right place. Today, our standard that we will be working on is maths.5.nbt.1.1. That's a fancy code for reading, writing, and comparing decimals, which is lesson six today. So let's get to it, y'all. Let me teach you. Example one. A number in expanded form is shown. Now I hope y'all are paying attention to this style of expanded form. We are stepping away from the FCAT days. It looks a little different. Notice all the fractions. Um, so what is the number in decimal form? We're, also, we're gonna write this number in standard form, which they're calling decimal form. So <clears throat> they have four, oh, oh here, let me explain this real quick. I've created a basic place value chart to help us through this lesson. Um, got the decimal, here's the ones place and the tens place. Then we've got the tenths. I made it a little t because the tenths are way smaller than the tens. Hundredths and thousandths. And this is what we would be multiplying by for each place value when we are using expanded form, which we have. So it'll come in handy for this lesson. If you're not sure what I just said, stick with me because it'll probably make more sense as we go. Here we go. Four times one, that's in the ones place, four, plus two times one tenth, so there are two tenths, plus seven times one hundredth, so there are seven one hundredths, plus eight times one thousandths, which would be eight right there. So written in decimal form, we have four and 278 thousandths. You would do four decimal point, two point eight, two point, four. <laughs> this should be a blooper. <laughs> it's not that hard to say this number. Four point two seven eight. Moving on. Ha ha ha. Example two is a graphic response item display. It says a number is in decimal form is shown. Should just be a number in decimal form is shown. We have nine and one hundred five thousandths. Represent the number in expanded form, so we're going to use up here, by dragging the fractions and symbols to its correct place. Oh yes, we will be dragging but because this is not computerized, we won't really be able to move it. But on your test, it will be computerized and you will be able to simply just and pull it over and plop it into the correct spot. So this is the paper-based version of what you will see. All right, <clears throat> so they have all this here, but I'm gonna get my, my thoughts all organized over here first. So I've got nine and one hundred five thousandths. So that would be 9 times 1, 9 times 1, plus 1 times 1 tenth. So I would take this 1 tenth and go there and put it in there. And I am multiplying those. And now I'm adding my 5 times 1 thousandth. And I totally skip a root the 1 hundredths place because there wasn't any hundredths. There weren't any hundredths going on. Uh -huh. What's going on all in my hair today? Um, no hundredths. So we do not have to list them up here. You could, but we don't have to. And there isn't a spot to put them on our graphic response item display. All right, I'm done talking. Let's go to the next example. Cut. Example three. Okay, this is a matching item. Select select the decimal form for each number name. Okay, the decimal form would be the standard form. The number name is what we used to refer to as the word form, if you remember the FCAT days. Just call it the number name. So here's our number names. Here's our decimal forms. And let's read the first one. Eight and 105 thousandths. So I'm looking for eight and 105, and that's in the thousandths place, so check. Eight and fifteen hundredths. Eight and fifteen hundredths. 
8 and 51 thousandths. 8 and 51 thousandths. That's awesome, dude. All right. Example four. Now, as you can see, we've got a bunch of boxes to select. So this is a multi-select item. It says select all the expressions that show 3 and 67 thousandths written in expanded form. So I'm going to put that number right over here. 3 and 67. The 7 ends in the thousandths place. So 3 and 67 thousandths. Okay, so 3 times 1. 3 times 1. 6 times 1 tenth. 6 times 1 tenth. No, it's 0 in the 1 tenth spot, in the tenth spot. 3 times 1. 3 times 1. 0 times 1 tenth. 0 times 1 tenth. 6 times 1 thousandth. One thousandth. Nope, 6 times 1 and 1 hundredth. 30 tenths. 30 tenths. Watch that again. 30 times the tenths place. 30 tenths. That makes sense. 67 thousandths. 67 thousandths. That makes sense. Therefore, yes, that is a correct answer. 30 times 1 tenth. We just did that. 30 tenths. Yes. 67 times the 1 one hundredths place. 67 lands in the thousandths place. So no, that does not work. 3 times 1. Yes. 0 times 1 tenth, 0 times 1 tenth, 6 times 1 and 1 hundredth, 6 times 1 one hundredth, 7 times 1 one thousandth, 7 times 1 one thousandth. I can't talk anymore, there's too many ths at the end of those. The third and the fifth answer are correct. You need both to get it right. For example five, we are bringing the classic back. Yeah! This is a multi, multi, multiple choice item type. Classic. Classic. Which statement correctly compares the two numbers? All right, I'm going to write them both down and line them up. We're saying that 0, 3, and 14 thousandths is greater than 3 and 14 hundredths. Well, this is the same, but the tenths place our one is actually greater, so it should be that this one is greater, not the other. So no. Two and sixty-eight hundredths. Two and six hundred eighty thousandths. Yes, our ones place is the same. Our tenths place is the same. Our hundredths place is the same. And technically this is a zero, so they are equal, folks. One is not greater than the other. Wrongo. Let's, well, I'll do one more over here. We have 17 and 17 hundredths, and we have 17 and 171 thousandths. Same, 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 same. Our only difference is here, so this one should be greater because our one in the thousandths place is greater than the nothing, the zero in the thousandths place. But C is claiming that the first one, the top one, is true. That is not right, so I should just mark D, right? No, I should look at it carefully first. All right, let me erase one of these so I can do my work. I have 12 and 58 hundredths. I have 12 and 579 thousandths. This is right, this is the same, this is equal. This one is greater as it should be, which this one is claiming it's bigger. So 12 and 58 hundredths is correct. I've proved D. You're welcome. All right, guys. Here's your motivational message from yours truly, Miss McCarthy. To be a champ, you have to believe in yourself when no one else will. Now, you might be saying, well, isn't it important to surround yourself with people who do believe in you? Absolutely. You need people in your circle who are going to believe in you. But sometimes, sometimes you have to dig deeper and believe that you can do it to get yourself to the next level, okay? 
You do want to surround yourself with people who do believe in you, but there's going to be people who don't believe in you. And to be the champ, you have to do it and prove those doubters wrong and do it for you. You've got this. You can do it. Bye.